Today I'm playing the rest of Arch Manning's college career and not stopping until he makes the NFL. He was the number one quarterback in his high school class, but he got stuck behind Quinn Ewers as a freshman, and now that he's a sophomore, he's still a backup, this time behind Malik Murphy. Texas also just joined the SEC, and their schedule going into 2024 is brutal, so even if he earns the starting job, he has a ton of work cut out for him, and it'll be hard to complete all six of these goals with Arch Manning before he declares for the NFL draft. Like always, if I fail even just one of those, I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter, and since Arch Manning isn't the starter, yet my main focus has to be these practice sessions where they can't guard everybody and Arch Manning's been able to take advantage of any defense that's been thrown his way so far so it's no surprise that Sarkeesian's trust in him is rising but he hasn't done enough to be the starter just yet and Texas's first game is going to be against the team that's projected to win the SEC. Arch is going to be forced to watch from the sidelines so I'm sure he's not thrilled about that but if Malik Murphy can't clutch up on this final drive we're going to lose and the worse Texas does the better chance Arch has at getting in with this not going anywhere so we will see what happens in this next practice as we're already to get in a 20 yard gain and I feel like if we do good enough Arch Manning's gonna earn a position battle to potentially become the starter. With a couple reps remaining he still hasn't thrown an incompletion and he's just gonna take his check down which got him enough coach trust to challenge for the starting spot. Before then though the Longhorns are facing Michigan and since it's at the big house this is probably gonna be rough. Malik Murphy did his best but once again it looks like we're gonna come up just short and that first down from JJ McCarthy seals it. Malik's honestly not even playing bad but Steve Sarkeesian is still giving Arch Manning a chance to earn the starting role and I can't believe how open Jatavion Sanders is on the right side of the field. There's been a lot of blitzes that have been brought my way, which has been a bit of a problem, and the play calling has been very similar to previous weeks with that one not being caught. I guess I have to run tight end option until we're successful with it, so this time we're going to go over the middle and it's going to be held onto by Helm. And we're competing decently well with Malik Murphy, but again, we're running this play and Adonde Mitchell isn't catching it. The reps went by so fast, and we really need to start moving it down the field with this one going for 10, but that's not going to be enough, and they got a free blitzer in on this play, so Arch Manning's going to get it out in time, but it didn't go anywhere, so it seems like he is going to lose this job, but that was a tight, tight throw. Three reps left now. He only needs 67 more coach trust or 57. I can't do any math. It's dropped. And Jatavion Sanders is one of our most reliable wide receivers. Now we're stuck in the halfback and this is not a good situation to be in, but Brooks is going to get out of there and that might be enough. The position battle is won. So this final play doesn't even matter. Arch Manning is the starter and this is where his career could really start to take off. He just has to play well enough so he doesn't become the backup again. And I love that we're able to upgrade his throw power and throw accuracy. He's taken over this team after it's already lost two games, but there's a 12-team playoff in NCAA football, so if we can win, our season's far from over. And on his first drive, his first pass is going to be a simple slant over the middle, which is going to go to Adonde Mitchell. He needs to make a name for himself here at Texas, and on this third and long, there's nothing that he wants to take. But the Longhorns defense got the ball back pretty quickly, and now he's keeping it on the read option for 15. I'm excited to see what we can do for him in his career, and we need to get a touchdown in this situation, but it's intercepted instead. I don't think it's Arch Manning's fault that Ryan Niblett just stopped running his route, but it's a a good thing he became the starter because there's no way he's winning player of the week. As with a couple minutes remaining in the second quarter, it is still 0-0 and we have yet to score with the Longhorns. It would make life easier on Arch if Jonathan Brooks could have just run it in, but both him and CJ Baxter failed, so we ended up settling for a field goal, and nothing has gone well in the third quarter, so it is looking very ugly for Arch Manning, but at least we're going to get this first down. Jonte Cook's going to break the tackle as well for even more yards, and maybe he'll pick things up in the fourth quarter. My biggest fear is him losing his starting job, but he's going to throw a laser to Sanders, and Texas is supposed to be good, so so we shouldn't be in this situation. The good news is we were able to maintain our lead throughout the game, so we're going to get the win, and that means we've taken down our rivals Arkansas, but Arch is barely going to keep his starting job, and to make sure that he keeps it, we're going to have to work hard with him in practice with completions like this. If we beat everybody in our division in the SEC, we can still make the conference championship as well, so Arch has an opportunity to make a name for himself, and the home crowd is excited to see what he can do. He might not have lived up to the hype against Arkansas, but against Ole Miss, he has a chance to redeem himself, and Jatavion Sanders just ran backwards, so the Texas offense got stopped on their first drive, but maybe that'll be different on their second one, and Arch Manning sees somebody open over the field as Jonte Cook, but Steve Sarkeesian is not letting him throw for the touchdown here as he has to hand it off to Jonathan Brooks, so he's having to patiently wait for his opportunity to get his first one, and he is going to have to roll out here and throw it to the first down marker. The only reason this drive is still alive is because of Arch Manning and the effort he put in there, but that was a bad throw, so we had to go into the half all tied up at seven, and on third and 17, there's nothing for Arch to take here. He is going to break the sack, but the Ole Miss defense is clamping up. If we're learning any anything right now, it's that the Longhorn defense is insane, because we shouldn't be in this game in the fourth quarter, but we're still all tied up at seven, and we're going to hit him with the play action, where Arch Manning's going to throw what should have been a touchdown. The defense the Rebels are playing right now is out of this world, but Arch is getting another opportunity, and that one's going to nibble it. He is finally thrown for a touchdown, and after the Longhorn defense held it down again, we are trying to run out the clock, but Ole Miss was prepared for the option, so the Rebels still have one final shot at coming back, and they're going to get this fourth down, which means they're going to have an opportunity at the Hail Mary, and Arch Manning watches as his team gets the sack, so 
he is now 2-0 as the starter, and Jonathan Brooks won player of the game again, but Arch Manning put up a decent performance. The games continue to get more difficult though, but LSU also already has two losses, so they're far from perfect, and Ryan Niblett's going to get open on the steep post over the middle of the field, but he drops the football. So Arch Manning made the right read and throw, but he still has to watch his team take three. Once again, the defense continues to impress, but our offense isn't. And from what I've seen from Arch Manning so far, he has not shown off any talent that would make me think he's an NFL player. Remember, we have to complete all six of these challenges by the end of the video. And right now, that seems extremely unrealistic just based off of the way he's playing. That ball is going to be floated perfectly, though. And his teammates need to start catching the football. To end the first half, we have the ball back again, and I'm hoping that this drive can go better than the other ones have. But my main goal has been to not throw any interceptions, so I shouldn't force it into this window, but it's dropped anyway. If it continues to go this way, for all we know, Arch Manning could just decide to transfer going into his junior season. And we all just want to see him have success. If this is cover two, that was going to be open, but he fumbles it away to Jones, and don't tell me that they're going to pick this one up and take it back to the crib. Arch Manning's not catching him, and nobody else is either. So what a brutal way to end the first half. We might as well try to take a deep shot on the Tigers, though, and that was perfectly placed. I think that's the first time in this video Arch Manning's made a spectacular play, and now he's throwing a touchdown. So something inside of him has been awoken, and it needs to continue here in the third quarter because LSU has a four-point lead on Texas at this point. He's not the slowest, so I've been trying to get him involved in the running game, but that was the wrong read, and here on fourth and one, we're running it back where he tumbled over. This time, he kept it when he should have, but then his foot got caught on the defender, and we're very fortunate that we got the ball back with another opportunity to score. As long as we're winning games, it doesn't really matter how we get those results, and Adonde Mitchell is going to have to come back to this ball, which he did perfectly. You love to see Arch Manning starting to build up some chemistry with his wide receivers out there. That's another first down, and he's going to hit him with a little bit of a play action. Notice that it's man-to-man -man coverage and go straight to Jatavion Sanders. That puts this in the hands of his defense, but they've done a fantastic job all day, so I'm expecting them to do the same as they get the interception. That's going to also be a truck. It's just disrespectful at this point, and Texas is starting to look like a team that could make the playoffs. This type of stat line isn't going to win Arch Manning Player of the Week, but it's enough to get us second in the division going into the Oklahoma game, and we need to start getting some more coach trust with him. That's why I've hopped into a practice, so just in case things don't go the right way against Oklahoma, he doesn't lose his starting job to Malik Murphy, and let's hope the winning streak can stay alive versus Oklahoma, because the Red River rivalry is the most important game of our season. Oklahoma would score early on, so we're not off to the best of starts, but at least we're going to pick up this first down to Jonte Cook, who's going to keep on running, and that drive would finish with a touchdown, with this one finishing with one as well. Compared to the other games we've played this season, our defense isn't doing as well, but holding them to a fourth and goal where they had to kick another field goal is a big deal, and on the second and ten, we're just going to keep going back to Jonte Cook. He's been Arch Manning's favorite target by far, as he continues to go right back in his direction, and Arch Manning's yet to put up any good stats, but winning the Red River rivalry would be a big deal, and that's a great throw. If our defense gets the Sooners off the field on fourth and three, it's going to be hard for them to come back, and I thought this game might come down to the wire, but we have full control of it, and if they keep running man coverage, we're going to take those out routes. The quarterback switch to Arch Manning has made all of the difference for the Longhorns as we're going to take this win, and Arch Manning had himself a game, but it wasn't enough to win player of the week, so at least we're back inside the top 12, and the hardest game remaining on our schedule might be our next one at Mississippi State. Also, if we're able to win out, we're going to have a spot in the SEC Championship, and I can't believe how quickly things have changed for Texas. They have a solid roster, but Arch Manning still has a lot of developing to do over these next few weeks, and Steve Sarkeesian rarely gives him a four verticals, but when he does, we're going to take advantage of it. To make matters even better, there's also going to be a face mask, and on first and goal, they're going with man-to-man -man coverage over there, so we're going to throw it up to Donde Mitchell. Mississippi State would respond right back, so this might turn into a shootout, and that is a terrible throw, but I trust Arch Manning to make up for it, and whenever you see man-to-man -man coverage, you know we're going to take that. Being forced to hand it off once we get down to this point is a little bit frustrating, but what I'm concerned about is whether or not we win, and I think we're going to have to go over the top to Jatavion Sanders, who just ran right by that linebacker, but Arch Manning didn't put enough on it, and that's disappointing because he definitely had both of them beat. By the fourth quarter, it's all tied up at 21, and on this halfback angle route, I'm going to Jonathan Brooks, but because he dropped it, we have to go for this, and that is going to be caught by Jonte Cook for the first down. He's clearly the target that Arch Manning trusts on this team, but we're going to have a crossing route, and that's going to have to be caught by Ryan Niblett, where he seems to finally be holding on to stuff, and the Texas defense got us the ball back, but to win this game, we're going to have to pick up this third and 12, and Arch Manning can't do much here. Assuming that Mississippi State scores, he's going to need to have a game-winning drive, and I trust in his ability to do that, which is going to be needed because it seems like they're about to fall in. With 43 seconds left, he's going to take the snap, and it's a bit risky, but we're going to go with the deep shot to Adonde Mitchell, who couldn't get by that player, but he had every advantage that he needed in this situation. It's starting to dawn on me that maybe Arch Manning doesn't have the strongest arm out there, and this is a huge third and 10 where it looks like our corner route could end up getting open, but we're going to go with the post over the middle instead, and that was an inaccurate throw from Arch Manning. Now we're headed to overtime, and the Longhorns have the first drive, but we can see their season crumbling away if they don't pick this up, and it's intercepted. Number 21 came out of nowhere to make a play on that ball, and all we can do is watch as that is going to seal the game. I wouldn't call 
Arch Manning's sophomore year a disappointment, but compared to everybody else, he's been very average, and now he has to win out or there's no hope of the playoffs. There's zero reason we should struggle against UTEP, but at this point in the game, we're trailing to them, which is a little bit concerning, and it's taken us until midway through the second quarter to have a chance to tie it back up and get onto the board with this throw being almost perfect. There's really no excuse or explanation to why it's still this close, but we are about to score again, and Arch Manning has yet to turn the ball over with us getting down to the red zone here and him threading the needle. By halftime, it's still 14-7, to but because of how good our defense is, UTEP hasn't really stood a chance at coming back on us, and here in the fourth quarter, we should probably be running out the clock, but I want to get some touchdowns. Arch Manning deserved to have this really good stat line, but to win player of the week, he has to do better, and right now we're sitting mid-table in our division in the SEC, so I have no idea how we're going to finish all of these challenges. Just because of his name value, Arch Manning will probably be drafted as a junior, so he's got limited time to turn it around, but right now against my Wildcats, we're losing 13-0, to and it should not be taking until the end of the first half to score our first touchdown of the game, but that one was almost picked, so we wouldn't have even gotten that, and we're going to go to Jonathan Brooks. What I've noticed about using Texas is it seems like every time we play somebody, they give us their best game, and we have to be able to overcome that. This time, we're going to run the option, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's out of bounds, actually. So that's a rough look for Arch Manning, and I don't want to only get a field goal out of this drive, so I forced it, and it's picked. Kentucky has a 20-point lead here in the fourth quarter. This is just embarrassing, and on fourth and 10 with a game on the line, I'm going to go with a corner route to Jatavion Sanders, and that was a very close call. Texas football is not doing very well, and Arch Manning might be on the verge of losing his starting spot if we cannot come back in this game. Now we're going to have to roll out with him. I see that we have circle open. Nobody's on that part of the field, but there's still a very long way to go, and Jatavion Sanders is the go-to guy in that situation. I love to see Arch Manning coming alive whenever we need him to in the clutch. They're running man-to-man -man coverage, so he might be able to scramble this one in himself, but he was tackled short, so we're going to have to throw for it, and there's the touchdown. Watching the Longhorns defense turn it around after giving up 27 to the Wildcats has been nice, but Arch Manning still has to finish the job, and he has a little bit of time back here. No one's open yet, so we're just going to have to fit it into that tight window, and I don't know what he would do without Jatavion Sanders because that has been his go-to guy. Now we're just going to dump it off, and we need to kill as much clock as possible. I don't want Kentucky to have any time left if we're able to reach the end zone, and keep in mind that we could still be a playoff team. There's only 20 seconds left now, though, going down to the five, so we're going to have to reach the end zone, and the bubble screen's open. Sanders is not going to fight, though, which means it's now third and two, and on the read option, Arch Manning's going to get in. He was so close to losing his starting job, but instead he's going to keep it and keep us alive in the playoff hunt, and that level of play can't slow down versus Missouri. We're so close to being back in the top 12 again, but before we continue his career, a word from Raycon, today's video sponsor. Raycon has premium tech products at a great price, like their everyday earbuds, which I use when I'm in the gym, and their stuff is perfect for a last-minute holiday gift or to help someone ring in the new year. They've earned over 100,000 five-star reviews, and right now Raycon is offering limited-time bundles on some of their best-selling products, where you could get everyday earbuds for you and your friends, and like I said, those are great for when you go to the gym or when you go on a run, because they have features such as noise isolation, which allows you to be totally immersed and block out outside noise, while also lasting for eight hours of playtime and even having a 32-hour battery life. This holiday season, you can get premium audio and power tech at a great price, and save even more doing it, so go to buyraycon.com slash board and save 15% off site-wide, which also supports the channel in the process, but let's get back to Arch Manning's career. The Tigers are not a free win, and unless we reach the end zone here, we're going to be forced to settle for a field goal. Missouri would score next after that, but all around, it's been a pretty low-scoring game. They sent in a blitz on this play, and Arch Manning was able to avoid two tackles, which is going to get us down to the eight, but the real question is, can we finish it off? And I don't think it's going to happen here. Right now, Johnny Walker Jr. has three sacks on the day, but he can't get enough pressure in on this one, so we would score, but so would Brady Cook, and with a few minutes left, once again, we find ourselves in a bad position, where we need a touchdown to stay in this game, and that's a great throw. If Arch Manning's done anything this season, it's proving that he's clutch, so I think that'll translate very nicely into his junior year, and we're going for the back of the end zone, which was the right move. He had a great drive there, but Brady Cook would score almost immediately, and I'm afraid that there's not too much he can do. We have all three of our timeouts remaining, but we're going to have to at least get in Hail Mary range, and he's got a pretty strong arm. It looks like they went with some press man-to-man -man coverage. We might be able to beat number two deep, and he made a play on it. Unfortunately, it is pretty obvious that our hopes are going to end right here. We're not going to be able to make the playoffs unless this is caught somehow, and what a disappointing season for Texas fans. There were points where Arch Manning showed flashes of greatness, but it took him almost all season to beat an opponent the way we beat Fresno State, and next year our schedule is not going to be any easier, so I don't know what's going to happen. All around, that was a pretty solid performance from him, and I'm shocked, but if Ole Miss loses one of their last two games, we could make the SEC championship. We will be there to prey on their downfall, but Missouri couldn't get it done, even though they were able to take us down, and this is just rubbing salt in the wound with another touchdown. We're technically still playing for something in the Lone Star Showdown, but we still need help if we want to make the SEC championship, and if Arch Manning were to ever go off, now would be the perfect time for it, but after we scored that touchdown, Texas A&M would respond back with one of 
their own and I don't think this is going to go anywhere as it's intercepted. I had to end the first half by sending up a prayer but all around it's been a pretty rough day until this drive where we're going to get down to the six and Jonte Cook the second is most likely going to feel that one in the morning. Arch really needs his defense to come up clutch though and they're going to stop Amari Daniels so we might get them off the field on third and goal where they're going to drop back try to run and that is going to be a touchdown. Once again Arch Manning put in a position where he has to lead this team down the field for a game winning drive and I'm pretty sure that he stepped up almost every single time but we don't want to leave too much time to Texas A&M. That was the issue against Missouri and that's cover two which should be a touchdown to Cook but there is 33 seconds on the clock and Texas A&M is doing the most to try and send this one to overtime where they're going to run and that's going to be a first down. You can hear the disappointment in my voice as you know that we're going to overtime and Arch Manning cannot afford to lose another game but after that touchdown his defense immediately gave up two so we're going to need another and I think it would be best if we went for the two point conversion assuming this is caught and that was put right where it needed to be. This is a very risky decision, but Jatavion Sanders created the separation and he fights in. So Arch Manning has done it again. And next year as a junior, he's going to be very good. Besides an interception or two, that might've been his best game yet. And we need Ole Miss to lose the Egg Bowl so bad. But since it looks like they're not going to, we're not going to make the SEC championship. And next year we have got to do better. We were only able to complete one of the six challenges and Arch Manning wasn't hitting 4,000 passing yards. But I think his stats were pretty respectable as he had 26 touchdowns to 10 interceptions and he also rushed in for four as well. His best receiver was tight end Jatavion Sanders, and we came surprisingly close to sneaking into the playoffs. Another team that did is Texas Tech, and in our bowl game versus them, Arch Manning has already thrown for two touchdowns. If anything, this just gets me more excited for next year because it shows how good he can really be when he plays well, but the game ended up going to overtime anyway, and we're going to have somebody in the end zone, but we need to get the two-point conversion as well to get the win, and that's going to happen. It was a very close finish, but Arch Manning showed that he was ready for next season, and after putting putting in a ton of work throughout the offseason, the junior is going to come into the next year even better. He's now a 94 overall with 94 throw accuracy, but for whatever reason, Texas is playing at Ohio State in 2025, and it's going to be difficult for him to have a ton of success when he's in such a tough conference as well. He's not in the Heisman race to start the year, and his first game is at number seven, Georgia. Arch Manning's going to need to step up big time, and on his first drive, they're about to force a three and out as he can't get the ball out. The Longhorn defense would force an interception though almost instantly, so now we're trying to move it down the field, and that needed to be held on to, but it wasn't, so it's now third down where we're going to get it to Jonte Cook the second for a touchdown. He's definitely going to be our best wide receiver, but we can spread the love around, and it's fumbled. Great. That is exactly what we needed against Georgia. By the time there's a couple minutes left in the second half, we're still up by four, and I'm going to throw it up to Ryan Wingo, who is not going to come away with that ball, but he really should have, as it was put in the perfect position, and right now Arch Manning is probably regretting not transferring out because his teammates aren't helping. Georgia forcing that stop would lead to them scoring the go-ahead touchdown to end the first half, and on the third and two, they're going to drop in with some zone cover but Arch Manning's going to use his legs for one of the first times because he can't trust his teammates to hold onto the ball and thankfully Jonte Cook the second did on this play. This is such a big game in SEC play and we're going to see the corner route hopefully get open. It is underthrown though and Arch could have put that ball in a better spot but he'll do that here. Georgia wouldn't waste any time scoring from that point but at the same time Texas has moved it down the field. Arch Manning's going to break the sack and he's going to run to the end zone himself but like it's been all day the game continues to go back and forth and I can't tell if the Bulldogs offense is just really good or our defense isn't as solid as it was for us in the previous season. On third and 10 with two minutes left, Arch Manning went with a little bit of play action. Now he's going to roll out. He's going to try to hit the deep post to Jonte Cook the second, and his number one wide receiver continues to make the right play. Of course, Georgia would score again though, leaving him with only 40 seconds left, but we still have a chance in this game. And he cannot lose his season opener as a junior with Texas. We have to go down the field and score a touchdown. This is where Arch Manning either makes or breaks his career. He notices it's cover two, and that's going to Jonte Cook. The question is, will Georgia be able to get into field goal range to send it to overtime and they're trying their best, but it's knocked away. So Arch Manning is watching from the sidelines, incredibly nervous as they have one more attempt. And with Brock Vandegriff throwing it away, all they can do is go for the Hail Mary. He somehow got the job from Carson Beck and has thrown for almost 500 yards, but he's not going to take down Texas in the end. And Arch Manning had his best college game ever. That's enough to win him his first ever player of the week award. And that knocks off the second challenge of the video. But if he's going to complete the other four before he makes the NFL, he has a lot of work to do. It's nice that he's been recognized to make the Heisman watch list, but he has to continue playing at a high level and on this play he's going to thread the needle up the middle. Approaching halftime I've been shocked at how well UTSA stayed in this game but they couldn't cover Ryan Wingo the sophomore wide receiver and after his touchdown drop in the last game he's trying to make a name for himself. Arch is looking for him on this play but he sees a broken route and that's going to be intercepted by UTSA. Turnovers like that aren't going to cost us the game but it will make it harder for him to win the Heisman Trophy and he needs to at least go for his third touchdown here which he's going to attempt to do by going over to Jonte Cook the second. They might be the best duo in the country right now and we're going to get a 25 point win over UTSA. So that's exactly what you want to see. After that, our next matchup is against
against San Jose State. So it's nice to play teams like this before the schedule gets extremely difficult later on. And let's just say we're going to destroy the Spartans. Well, at least I thought we would. With a minute left in the third quarter, we're up by 11, but we should be beating them by even more. And Arch Manning's looking to throw for another touchdown on this drive, but he's getting sacked. He needs to be putting up better numbers if he's going to win that Heisman Trophy. And that corner route wasn't great, but Juwan Davis still came away with it. And at the end of the game, Arch Manning really padded his stats, slinging it all over this defense. With this one, he wants to score one more touchdown, and he's just going to try to do it with his legs as he runs around and fights his way in, which means he was able to score five touchdowns again. And right now, we're considered a top four team in the country. Even with his great performances, though, Arch Manning's not high up in the Heisman race, so he's going to have to put the work in versus Arkansas. And with it raining, that could affect his passing game. On the first drive, it hasn't made a difference, but there's still a very long way to go. And they've gotten us to a third and 12 where they went with man to man coverage, and that is not a good decision with these receivers. There's always going to be somebody open when you do that. And Arch Manning just started running up the score on the Razorbacks, which is something we have not seen from him. The refs don't think he reached the end zone on that play. And to be honest, his knee might have touched the ground first, but you have to take a look from multiple different angles. And ultimately, the refs decided to overturn it. That allows him to run down the clock before getting his touchdown. And I don't even know what to think because last year in SEC play, we never took out teams this badly. Arch Manning got to sit for most of the second half, but he was still able to put up this incredible stat line. And he's about to have a really tough test at Ohio State. He already proved that he was legit on the road versus Georgia, but it's a little different against the Buckeyes because they're also solid and they've stopped us on our first drive while also having a 21 point lead by the third quarter, which is not good. We have a lot of work to do and he is struggling versus the Buckeyes. I don't know what happened to our defense either as they've been playing terribly, giving up 28 already. Jonathan Brooks is barely getting the first and we'd end the first half scoring a touchdown, but we still have a very long way to go if we're going to come back and Arch Manning's going to roll out, throw this one off of his back foot and find Niblet for 20. If the offense wasn't so stagnant in the first quarter, this game would be a much different story. That one shouldn't have been picked though. And hopefully our defense can figure out how to stop the Buckeyes after this touchdown. Well, they did. And then Wingo had a punt return for a touchdown, making it 21 to 28. Now we have the ball back again, and we're going to find Wingo for a big play. So the sophomore is going crazy right now, and we might as well keep feeding him. I don't think I've ever had a 28 point comeback when playing this game, but it's about to happen. And after taking that hit, I'm surprised to see Arch Manning is still out on the field, but we've got it tied at 28. And on third and four, Ohio State's going to go with the halfback screen, which results in a touchdown. So the game is in the hands of Arch Manning, and if we score a touchdown, I might have to go for the two-point conversion, but that's still a long ways away, and he kind of has speed on him now. Since his throwing stats are almost maxed out, I've been working on that in practice, but that route just got run by the Ohio State corner, and I don't even know what to say. To make matters worse, he's going to take it back to the house, and Arch Manning should have been more careful with the ball there. Even if we score, we're still going to be down by a possession, so he has to watch this onside kick from the sidelines, and did we recover it? Yes, we did. He's had two interceptions in this game, but it doesn't mean that we aren't going to win it, because he could lead this team down the field right now, and with the right blocks, that's exactly what's going to happen. Look at Niblet go. He just dusted number one for the touchdown. And after our defense clutched up, we have the ball with 20 seconds left. So we could get in field goal range to go for the win. It's going to be very hard to do. Arch Manning almost threw a pick. So it's probably best that it just went to overtime where we're going to have to get into the end zone. And Arch Manning's had a couple of mistakes in this game, but he has to clutch up at this point if he wants to win the Heisman. And he is trying to use his legs to do it. Only two more downs to get in now. And John Tay Cook, the second, broke the press. So that might be enough to get us the win as Ohio State's on a third and 23 after taking a holding call, and I cannot believe that we just pulled off a 28-point comeback, but there's no way Devin Brown picks up this 4th and 30, and that's it. Right now, Texas fans might do anything for Arch Manning, and there's a reason that he's number one in the Heisman race. He won Player of the Week for a second time, and he has this team sitting on top of the SEC, but the Red River rivalry is here to stir up some trouble. Right now, Oklahoma's undefeated at number four in the country, and the Sooners would score first, but we've moved it down the field where Jonathan Brooks is going to take this halfback screen to the outside, which was not where the open space was, but that's why we're passing it on this down and Arch Manning got tackled. His own running back would stop him from escaping the pocket and being forced to settle for a field goal there wasn't the end of the world, but it did take us this long to reach the end zone. It took it being the Red River rivalry for our defense to figure it out, but both teams are playing very well on that side of the ball, at least until I jinxed it because now we're trailing 20 to 10 nearing the end of the third quarter and none of our players are getting open on this play. I'm surprised that we're not punting in this situation, but this is a big deal. We have to pick this up and Jonathan Brooks was left open on the right side of the field. So the drive stays alive going into the fourth quarter, but Oklahoma came to play, and on this third and 16, we need to at least get half of it back, which we don't do. Steve Sarkeesian is refusing to punt, though, so we have to pick up this fourth and 16, and there's no time back there, which unfortunately means that we're most likely not going to take down the Sooners, but our defense holding them to a field goal there does give us a slight chance still, and Jonte Cook the second's going to get 20. There's not much time left on the clock now, and they're already getting in pressure, so Arch Manning's going to have no choice but to run out of there. That spin move was so clean, though, getting extra yards, and I didn't realize he had something like that in him, but we have to get this third and three and that's what
what we're going to do. This year, when you have Arch Manning at quarterback, you're always in the game. But on this stage, Ryan Niblett cannot be dropping that ball. And we should have just kept it on the ground to get into the end zone instead, but that won't work either. I don't want to take our first loss to Oklahoma this year, but I doubt we're going to have the luck of the onside kick on our side again. And the Sooners are going to be able to run out the rest of the clock on us. It's sad, but we're not going to win the Red River rivalry. And now Oklahoma has to lose twice for us to make the SEC championship. To make matters worse, now Trevor Etienne's leading the Heisman race, and we're playing against a team that stunned us last year. We shouldn't have lost to Mississippi State, but Arch Manning must want it to happen again because here in the third quarter, we're losing 16-7, to and even though Ryan Wingo would catch that touchdown pass, Mississippi State scored almost immediately, plus he couldn't keep his feet in there, so we need the refs to overturn it. And on this play, it looks like he did get that right foot down in time. Thankfully, the refs also agree that it's a catch, so our drive stayed alive, and we cannot let our season fall apart now. Ryan Niblett dropping the ball is nothing new, and I wish he would just get benched at this point, but Jonathan Brooks was still able to fight his way in, and our defense would get us the ball back, so Arch Manning has it. We're down by two, and all we need is a field goal. It's been a rough game, as they've definitely outplayed us, but we can still get the win, and I have to be very careful that I don't throw an interception with Arch Manning. I'm going to use the blocker to our advantage here. He's going to scramble, and let's see if he can juke to the left. Yes, he can. That'll get us extra. Especially with it raining, he could have fumbled in that situation, but I was risky, and that's a big play to Moore Jr. So Arch Manning is about his business right now, and we might as well go for the touchdown with this much time left. That way we can lock in our points and on this play, I think there's a lane here, but I've decided not to take it. For some reason, something in my head told me to play it a little bit smarter. So we're going to take a timeout and Arch is able to watch as his team is going to kick the game winner. With that result, we're now six and one, but Oklahoma picked up a tough win at Alabama. So they're probably not losing two more and that would ruin our chance at winning the SEC championship. As for the Heisman Trophy, Arch Manning's not even in the race and he better step it up versus Ole Miss. In a matter of two games, everything fell apart. But with a 12-team playoff, this season's far from over, and that should have been a touchdown. The linebacker jumped up like he played in the NBA, and it's taken us until there's four minutes left in the second quarter to score a touchdown. Arch Manning's done pretty well, though, and on that left side of the field, Ryan Niblett's wide open, so let's hope he holds on. And from this point forward, we just have to continue to maintain the lead we already have, but sometimes Ole Miss clamps up on defense, and if this is zone coverage, we're going to take the hitch, which was wide open. This has been a great bounce-back game for Arch Manning, as he has not messed around, and with two minutes left, we could run out the clock, but he's still passing for more touchdowns. Ole Miss scored a lot in this game, but they simply weren't able to keep up with our offense as Arch was on another level today, fighting for everything. And if he's going to finish his college career strong, we need this side of him. At this moment, he's fifth in the country in passing yards. And I couldn't tell you why Drake May is still in college, but we have bigger things to worry about as we're playing at Texas A&M. And at the end of the first quarter, we're down seven to zero. The inconsistencies from this Longhorn team have got to drive Texas fans insane. And that has got to be held onto in the end zone. But the Ryans on this team cannot hold onto the ball consistently. Consistently, and that's why the best target to go for is always John Tay Cook II. With 35 seconds in the half, we're actually up 14 to 7, but we need to score even more points. And Arch Manning's been going crazy, but he's trying to make his stats even better, so he's going to roll out and look down the field to see Ryan Niblett, who again is going to actually catch the ball, and I don't know what's going on. It is not normal of him to play this well, but Texas A&M has come alive here in the third quarter. We're not going to get this third and 16, and all of a sudden it's all tied up at 21, and it is third and long. Arch Manning's going to roll out, find his receiver, but it's not held on to. So by the the time he's getting the ball back, it is now 28 to 21 and we are losing. It's embarrassing to go the entire second half without scoring any points at all. But Texas A&M's defense has come alive. They figured out how to stop us and we don't know what to do at this point. On third and six, they're going to send a little bit of a blitz in and we're just going to take the slant to Kane. But we're probably going to have to play for overtime because I don't want to risk going for the two point conversion and then hurting the rest of our year. Before we even have to make a decision like that though, we have to reach the end zone and there is a wide open wingo, but he dropped the football and Arch Manning has got to be speechless after that one. That is ridiculous. We're still driving though and the cheerleaders are vibing out. So all is good as long as we eventually get seven and that is another first down. Arch Manning is so tired at this point. If he got hit, he'd probably get injured, but we desperately need him to clutch up and that blitz was crazy. With 14 seconds left, it seems like there's no way that we are able to win this game unless we get a little bit here. And I'm sure that they're going to bring in this blitz on fourth and seven, which they did. So we're going to take our corner route and it's going to be caught. Texas A&M would waste no time scoring on their first overtime drive though. So now we have the ball and Arch Manning's going to run for the first down. I cannot believe how crazy of a finish that just was. But if we could get through regulation, we can get through OT. Here on our second drive, Arch Manning's going to take this snap and we're going to try to thread it up the middle on the cover three. It's caught. But Texas A&M would score on their next drive and the one following that, they're going to only be able to get a field goal because that's not hitting the marker. So it's Arch Manning's time to shine and take care of business because if he can do that, we're going to get the win. But that was a bad throw. And here on third and 10, we might as well try to thread it over the middle, which is going to be caught by Wingo. It took everything, but we have taken down our rivals and we can celebrate this one for a long time. Arch Manning's seven touchdowns have gotten him back into the Heisman race, but if he wants to climb higher, he has a lot of work to do, and this is going to be
be our first snow game of this video. Missouri hasn't been good on this dynasty file, but I'm not going to count them out of this game just yet, because for all I know, they could come out and put up a really good fight. I'm hoping that Manning can throw this one for a touchdown to Brooks, and I thought all would be well from there, but to my surprise, right now we're down 31 to 14, and that touchdown gets us within 10, but we're still trailing by a lot. Arch Manning's going to try to go deep here, and 43 got back to that ball. Missouri has done everything right that they need to, and they just forced a fumble on us, so we wouldn't get it back until there's three minutes remaining, and at this point, there's not much we can do besides hope that we score quickly. I've accepted that I might not complete every challenge with Arch Manning, but losing something like this would really make everything fall apart, and that should have been intercepted, but it wasn't. It's going for a touchdown. Our defense also got us the ball back, and we have enough time to throw this one up. I don't think 43 is going to keep up with our number 13, because we all know how quick Ryan Wingo really is, and that's a dot. It was fun watching Missouri collapse until they scored with 48 seconds left, and now Arch Manning needs to do everything in his power to at least get us a field goal on this drive, but I feel like he can only do so much because he already had to come up with a crazy comeback, and we might as well run with him for the first down. If he continues to roll out of the pocket, he's going to get extremely tired on this drive, but we might have to do that anyway. And this is an opportunity to continue his Heisman level performances, but I cannot handle another overtime game. We've had so many of them, so we have to get a touchdown. The end zone is so close, and the tight end just has to hold onto the ball, but Missouri was not letting us get in. And on second and goal, we'll see if the halfback angle route works in our favor, which it does. It came down to the wire, but we're going to win in the snow. And Arch Manning deserves the Heisman trophy. He's the only reason this team is sitting at 9-1, and one, and I'm hoping LSU doesn't give us too many issues, because a first round bye in the playoffs would be awesome. Recently, Arch Manning has been racking up the touchdowns, and he's going to get another here, but unfortunately for us, LSU is trying to turn it into a shootout, so we could go back and forth all day. Here, down inside the red zone, they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, so the curl is open, and on our third drive of the day, we've gotten down to the five-yard line, and then we're easily getting in. If the Tigers want to go back and forth, I am confident that we can score touchdowns quicker, as that's going to be another one. And at the end of the day, I don't think LSU realized what they were signing up for. They simply couldn't keep up with Arch, but that lost Oklahoma kills us as we just got confirmation that we can't win the SEC. Our final regular season game is against Vanderbilt, and we should have no issues in this one, but to get this type of lead against the Commodores, Arch Manning's had to work super hard, and I hope that our high level of play can carry on into the playoffs. He threw for almost 400 yards and four touchdowns, but again, we have to watch conference championship week from the sidelines, and even though he was the best quarterback, he didn't win the Heisman Trophy. He didn't even lead the country in passing yards, and I can't be excited he cleared 4,000 because I've come up short on multiple challenges. I do think it's pretty unbelievable he didn't win the Heisman with 49 passing touchdowns and only 8 interceptions, especially when you pair that with 6 rushing touchdowns. But another thing that made me have a double take is there was only one 1,000-yard receiver, and I'm ready for the playoffs to see if he can get Texas a championship. I really don't want to have to face off against Texas A&M again, but they're the higher seed going into this matchup against Oregon, and it wasn't even close. That's going to make this quarterfinal matchup miserable, because the last time we played it went to like 5 OTs, and we have to get off to an amazing start. Well, our defense got a stop early, and now we're driving down the field. We're trying to get inside their red zone, and that pass is going to take us to the one. So we should be getting seven here with Jonathan Brooks. And I can't believe he didn't get in in that situation, but I know Arch Manning will. After what happened the last time we played them, if anybody's going to keep his foot on the pedal, it's him. He's going for a deep shot here, and it is dropped, which is frustrating because Ryan Wingo's actually had a really solid season. I mean, he's dropped a lot of balls, but for a sophomore, he has done a fantastic job. And you know when the Aggies are swatting down balls at the line that the defense is going crazy. That's an interception. And we're very fortunate that here in the third quarter, we're somehow not losing. Arch Manning hasn't had to do much as he's just watched the defense put on a clinic all day. And we also have a punt return for a touchdown, which is why we have 21 points, even though the offense hasn't been great. And we're picking up this third and 10 that Jonte Cook the second. So the drive stayed alive and they are not properly aligned over there on Wingo. So we're going to throw it up to him on this fourth and four where he's going to hold on. This makes up for his drop earlier on. And this game has gone so much differently than it did the first time we played each other. Whenever the Aggies offense is struggling this much, it's not going to be a shootout. And we have moved on to the semifinals. Our next opponent is either Washington or Baylor, and the Huskies haven't lost a game all season, so I feel like we lucked out at the fact that they weren't able to take down the Bears, and this final heave means nothing to them. They were never coming back from being down 15, and I wish Penn State could have knocked out Oklahoma. If we're able to beat Baylor, we're gonna have to face them again, and that would be quite the championship and an ending to Arch Manning's career. Statistically, he was the number one quarterback in college football, so I know for a fact that he's gonna get drafted, but we cannot move the ball on the Bears. And midway through the second quarter, this is the first time that we've crossed midfield. We're gonna try to go with the deep post, and that's gonna be caught. So we're lucky that Ryan Wingo was actually able to hold on and get away, but we cannot be struggling this much offensively, and on third and seven, we're gonna have to fit it into that tight window, but the Bears were ready for it. That would lead to another touchdown, making it 17 to seven, and I'm starting to get worried, because I think we've gotten caught looking ahead to facing either Oklahoma or Ohio State, and Arch Manning's gonna juke that guy out, plus spin out of there. This is his best run yet, but we're gonna need to see more from him if we're gonna score a touchdown on this drive, and that's another draw. It has been like this all video, and we have 
have to get this third and 14 now where that throw was put exactly where it needed to be and this next one is going to the crosser over the middle overcoming this deficit is not easy as Baylor continues to score anytime we do but we had somebody deep Arch Manning's gonna see it and that throws too far that is so frustrating that was our chance now he's gonna try to go for another deep shot and if we can run by their corners like that we might as well do that more often that's gonna go to the house Longhorn defense also got a stop so now we have the ball back up by four and I should have known better than to throw it to Wingo in that situation because he has not been consistent with catching but Ryan Niblett has been and I almost want to say he's redeemed himself as he broke that press and he's trying to outrun number 27 which he was not able to do Arch should have taken that one earlier but he wanted the big play and now we need this fourth and three which we won't get but in the end Baylor would throw a pick six and then another interception so we're all good Arch has played pretty well but the defense has also carried him at times when he hasn't and you need to have that combination to be a championship type team he still scored five touchdowns which is awesome but now we find out if we're playing Oklahoma again in the championship and it looks like we're gonna as there's nine seconds remaining and Ohio State's throwing this off their back foot so all they can do is throw up one more heave to the end zone and this one is going to be knocked down it's gonna be us versus the Sooners for a second time and Arch Manning could seal his legacy at Texas if he can win this Longhorn fans will love him forever but if he loses this Longhorn fans are gonna hate him forever and all the pressure is on him to get the job done his defense already got one stop on Oklahoma but if you remember the last time we played it was a defensive battle and this is too by the time there were a couple minutes left in the half both teams have scored seven but no more than that it is all tied up and we need to get some more here but Arch Manning is going to make a great throw and he didn't even set his feet for that one it has been even all day as both teams have seven first downs and I swear that that deep post route was never caught but that was a very rough sack to take and here on third and 21 we have to go for all the glory but that defender is going to play it perfectly so we just punted it back and we'll go into the half tied at seven at some point somebody's going to have to step up and on this one Arch Manning sees that he has somebody underneath so he's just going to take his easy read but he's not used to it taking this long to score points and that was almost intercepted I don't know what it is about this Sooners defense but their coverage stats seem to all be 99 overalls because it is rare when you see somebody wide open so you have to take advantage of it Arch Manning just set a career record at Texas and the Longhorn defense has forced an interception so we have the ball back he's going to try to go for the deep post shot though and that was a terrible decision all he had to do was keep it simple but again we can trust the defense to get some stops on Jackson Arnold and this time around we'll keep it more simple by running stuff like halfback screens which go for a few and then we'll give it to Jonathan Brooks who's been very underutilized ever since Arch Manning started throwing a lot better with two clock on Oklahoma has to realize that they're in a ton of trouble and it is so crucial that we get at least a field goal out of this drive so I'm not forcing anything if I don't have to Arch Manning hasn't been spectacular but he's still going to be the first quarterback off the draft boards and he just fumbled it away which is a problem because Steve Sarkeesian won't send out the field goal unit he's keeping the offense on the field and we're going to convert on fourth down I couldn't believe he didn't want to put the field goal unit out there but now I'm glad that he didn't Arch Manning just spun out of there and it looks like the Sooners are about to go down by two possessions from there they could never recover and score again so Arch Manning ends his career with a Red River rivalry win and of course celebrating a national championship with Texas that was a journey but I'm glad I didn't make him transfer because he broke record after record and ignore the fact that he was a second round pick that went to the Indianapolis Colts anyway that wraps up his college career and if you enjoyed this video I guarantee you're going to enjoy this one for me that YouTube recommended or this playlist of all of my rebuilds